Hello everyone. Today we are going to present the simulation methodology for timing analysis and design automation in digital superconducting electronics. My name is Sam Lowe. Aaron Baker and I are going to present this topic as he is the co-author amongst other contributors to this paper. This research and development project is partially supported by the Office of Director of National Intelligence, Intelligence Advanced Research Project Activity, ALPA. Synopsis was awarded the contract of ALPA Super Tools program in 2017. Super Tools seeks to develop a superconducting circuit design flow with a comprehensive set of EEA solution, electronic design automation, and TCAT tools, technology computer aids design for very large integrated circuit, VSI, of superconducting electronics. Today we go over the following. Introductions to superconducting electronics. Joseph Junction device modeling. Simulation of rapid single flux quantum circuit design. Some of X5 simulations and enhancement for this project. And timing analysis and design automation of superconducting electronics. Some keywords which will be good for the audience to become familiar with. SCE stands for superconducting electronics. RSFQ stands for rapid single flux quantum. AKFP stands for adiabatic quantum flux parametron. The full chart shows synopsis EDA solutions for the backend tools for SCE. Custom compiler used for schematic capture and circuit layout. IC validator for physical verifications. Star ROC for parasitic extractions. Primary for use for simulation setup and simulation result analysis, including waveform. XPice is the circuit simulator, and MISTIC are used for model extractions and curve fitting. For the next few slides, I will turn over to Aaron Barker, the co author of this paper, to give an overview in superconducting electronics. Thanks, Sam. Before we go further into superconducting electronics, let's go over some background. In digital CMOS logic families, binary ones and zeros are represented as high and low voltage levels. In HSPICE, we can drive a threshold which states that if the signal's voltage goes above a specific level, it constitutes a logic one. Conversely, if it falls below an alternate level, a logic zero. Based upon these definitions, using HSPICE's .lprint method, HSPICE will report what is known as a value change dump file. Reported in the VCD, are these B1 logic state of 1 and B0 logic state of 0 switching events. This allows to capture the event time for each switching event, deduce the logic of the gate, logic state transition, perform logic verification, and drive various circuit timings. For superconducting electronic circuits, however, these kinds of high-low voltage levels, which constitute 1, 0 binary states, do not exist. As such, an alternate approach must be applied. The primary building block of superconducting electronics is the Josephson junction. A Josephson junction is created when two superconducting materials are brought together. Between these two superconductors is an insulator where the thickness is no greater than the coherence length of a Cooper pair. By bringing superconductors together in this manner, it forms what is known as a supercurrent. Due to the quantum phase difference between the two wave functions, psi1 and psi2. We can describe this current using the Stuart McCumber RCSJ model, which expresses the sinusoidal relationship between quantum phase and the current. A key physical constant found in this description is the magnetic flux quantum, or phi naught. This is the unit quantified by taking Planck's constant and dividing it by the charge of the two electrons found in our Cooper pair. When the bias for the Jetson junction exceeds the critical current IC, the JJ will emit a single flux quantum pulse in voltage. By integrating this voltage for the time interval of the pulse, we get back our phi naught. Multiplying this quantity by the two electron charge and dividing by Planck's reduced constant will express the quantum phase value for the JJ's anode within the circuit context. Let's now bring the discussion back to superconducting electronics. For superconducting electronics, the same principles used in CMOS logic do not apply. The signal is the emittance of single flux quantum pulses. 
a 1 is represented by the pulse and a 0 is inferred by the absence of the pulse with no real definitive moment when precisely that state goes from a logic 1 to a logic 0 other than some gray zone relative to a reference clock. In practice, the state of the circuit has more to do with analyzing the history of the number of quantum phase transitions and the direction than these pulses and their representations of 1s and zeros. This is why the probing of phase is so important when validating logic signal propagation for these circuits. For these next sections, I'll be discussing Joseph Junction modeling. Here are the Joseph Junction's device models and IV characteristics. The two equations represent voltage and current to quantum phase relation. This is the classical Joseph Junction model, Bitcoin RLCSJ model. There is a nonlinear component for the junction. We use a cross as the symbol. And there are resistor, capacitor, inductance components, as well as sun components. The IV curve, of course, is very different than CMOS because there is a superconductor stage. You start with a critical current at zero voltage, also known as I creek. For the transition from superconducting to resistance stage, there is a nonlinear relation. We use five unique points, P1 to P5, to model this nonlinear shape. As part of the Super Tools program solutions, we have the model extraction framework using tools called MISTIC. So the extraction strategy is very similar to semiconductor as well. You get the measurement data from the fab, you call target data. You upload it to the system and you create the extraction strategy. The way for this software, we use Python uh, to describe the strategy. Then they will try to do the curve fitting uh, for the P1, P2 to P5, the plot we showed in the earlier slide. Then we get the space model. On top of the classical RLCSJ model, Within the work of this program, we introduce some new effect, which is the temperature dependence. Here is the equation, the relationship for the temperature dependency, which mainly the shift the IV curve to the right, which eventually will impact the delay uh, over different temperature. Next, I will be discussing RF circuit simulation and advanced simulation capability. This is the quick recap of the RSFQ circuit simulations before we talk about the advanced tool capability. So it's similar to what Aaron already talked about. Okay, so for the Joseph Junction here, in the top diagram, the cross represents the active device. So it serves like more like a two terminal threshold devices. In this example, you try to propagate the FFQ from input to output. And when the current is smaller than the threshold, we call it critical current. In the previous slide, we call I grid. Then our device is in superconducting state. They will store the information and have a zero resistance. Then once the currents like pass through the threshold, then the device switch to normal conductance. And then you get the resistance and now the signal propagate. Yeah. When the signal propagate, yeah, it is always in the SFQ, the single flux quantum. The graph in the bottom show how the single fast quantum propagate from input to the first JJ and the second JJ. As Aaron described earlier, in SFQ logic families, the signal does not express binary ones and zero as voltage levels like the found in CMOS, rather as single fast quantum voltage pulse. As such, we have introduced a new stimulus to expose the G pulse voltage source, which emits SFQ pulse emulated using a Gaussian shape. One can also specify bit patterns, even have the source auto-generated pseudo-random bit patterns. For signal probing, we have added the quantum phase probe. This probe will automatically convert the voltage signal into equivalent quantum phase per node. Two important simulation capabilities are analyzing how process variation and thermal noise effect impact circuits and signals. For this final section of our presentation, I'll be discussing logic verification, timing analysis, and design optimization. For logic verification and timing analysis, we're going to leverage several H by S capabilities. The ability to probe the quantum phase of a node, the ability to measure events such as when or cross or at using H by S continuous measurement approach dot major trend cont. This will then give us the event timing uh, of each switching event. 
from this, we can also determine what is the present state and next state and next next state from which we can deduce precisely when those state transitions occur. Using this, we can understand what is the logic being propagated, what has been observed for the logic of the gate. We can compare this to what is the expected logic of the gate. For example, it was this supposed to have been an AND gate, an OR gate, an AND gate. What is this gate? Uh, if it worked or didn't work, we can set it to a pass flag, pass or fail, based upon the expected logic versus the observed logic. In order for HSPICE to perform the kinds of measurements required for logic verification, we must first condition the signals using the following transformations. The first thing we want to do is probe the voltage of the node. From here, the quantum phase using the QPH command. Next, we will want to convert the phase into counting numbers, the number of two pi radian phase transitions seen by a particular node. Then finally, perform a modulo two operation so that each switching event can be captured when this transform signal, which now ranges between 0 and 1, crosses the datum of 0 0.5. We can now perform timing analysis by leveraging the signal probe transformations shown on the previous slide and applying the continuous measurement approach. In this way, we have found a suitable replacement to the value change dump report commonly used in CMOS. Applying statistical process variation upon our logic verification method using Monte Carlo, we can determine the yield for the circuit. To add to that, we can perform advanced analysis such as yield margining by measuring the yield relative to dimensions such as clock frequency and bias. Reviewing the resulting topo map for this particular case, we find some interesting insights regarding the behavior for our circuit. We observe that if we bias too high, there is a very decisive point at which functional yield will roll off very rapidly. We also find on the lower end of bias that there is a nice relationship between frequency and bias. This indicates that we may be able to boost our performance by increasing the bias and frequency a bit more without risk of functional yield loss, but not too much as we just explained. Even more interesting is this island of high yielding re region. I won't go into details as to why this occurs, only to state that one should never center their circuit margin in a localized region such as this. Let's go over some aspects of design optimization. For superconducting electronics, the RSFQ standard cell library has many of the same cells you expect to find in CMOS, flip-flops, NAND gates, NOR gates, XOR gates, inverters, and so on. Additionally, SCS-specific cells which are unique to this technology, such as splitters, confluence buffers, as well as transmitters and receivers for passive transmission lines. Unlike CMOS, SFQ logic gates come in only one size, not multiple sizes. In this technology, the output of the cell is not loaded by a fan out of gates, but rather by passive transmission lines. An additional challenge is that not all logic styles and components commonly found in CMOS can be constructed in this technology. As such, one must be very clever in how to construct things like full digital logic paths, multiplexers, demultiplexers, register files, and memory arrays. Each gate must be robustly designed and optimized for performance and against susceptibility to variation as the ability to compensate by resizing various gates along the path is not available. A given cell may contain hundreds of circuit components, where each component may contain at least one or two, maybe three different design parameters. For corner-based design optimization, we've implemented a solution which performs multi-dimension, multi-objective optimization. In this example, we took a D flip-flop and optimized both power and delay simultaneously. From HSPICE AVA's dialog box, we can see how to specify from the major selector tab, the measurement objectives and priorities where objectives include minimize, maximize, target, or constrain. We, we also see how we can adjust the range of design space exploration from the design variables tab, well, whereby default, the form is auto-populated based upon the original design value and the manufacturable range, the small size JJ all the way to the largest size JJ. After optimization, we auto-update the schematic to improve the design values and allow the user to toggle the color map between the percent difference and sensitivity as to highlight the most critical of components. For this slide, we have an example report coming from HSPICE AVA. This report indicates the design's original value as well as the design's optimum value. It expresses the delta value as well as the sensitivity of each and every single design variable. It also reports the measurement results, what we originally had to what we now have after it's been optimized. In this case, we're optimizing both delay and power. Over here on the left, we're showing the results of three basic 
library cells, which we investigated, the XOR gate, the D flip flop, and the NOR gate. As we can see, in each case, we were able to improve the performance, you know, somewhere between seven to 9%. By combining the capabilities used for logic verification with those used for corner-based performance optimization, we're working on extending the optimizer to address the issue of functional yield loss. Similar to what we have shown for yield margin analysis, we can compute the yield relative to statistical process variation. But this time, opposed to just looking at the bias and clock frequency, we're analyzing the impact all design dimensions have upon yieldability. Optimizing the yield metrics similar to how we optimized for performance metrics in our corner-based optimization solution, we are finding that we're able to make considerable improvement to the robustness of our design against factors of yield loss. In summary, in support of the IRP SuperSales program, we've created a complete EDA solution for superconducting electronics. In this talk, we have reviewed just a few aspects of our solution, including source injection modeling, key enhancements to H spicer generating SFQ pulses, probing of quantum phase, applying continuous measurements to perform logic verification, and so on. We also showed how to apply these methods to perform circuit optimization, margin yield drift to bias and clock, and not by superconducting electronics designs against factors of functional yield loss. This concludes our presentation. Thank you for your attendance.